Welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park. I am your host, Ron Nicoletti. It is a beautiful Thursday afternoon. We have 10 races. Let's look at the track and weather conditions. The main track fast, the turf course firm, the first race, six and a half furlongs. These are maiden claimers, three year olds and upward. We'll have nine runners going to the post. They're up. Roy Ayer was off poorly. St. Suave was off well, so was El Gran Gallego. Splitting horses now as Executive Rapid Lightning to zoom to the front and Zephyrve down toward the inside. Away mid-flight is El Discreto, a neck better than El Catracho. Then down to the inside, it's the recovering Roy Ayer in front of Senshi, and the trailer is one at a time, Sunshine. Down the backstretch they go, chasing the speed of Eddie Dominguez and Rapid Lightning past the half-mile pole on a two-and-a-half-length lead. Zephyr Bay is racing in second. On the outside in third is El Gran Gallego, then to the rail, Roy Ayer. El Discreto put into the clear to move up. He's into fourth now and racing about five lengths behind as Roy Ayer just tapped on the brakes again. St. Suave is trying to get a move on with six lengths to race, two in front of the inside running Senshi, then El Catracho and one at a time, Sunshine. Five-sixteenths away, El Gran Gallego goes up to put a neck in front, El Discreto right alongside second two lengths back to a retreating rapid lightning third and they're at the top of the stretch El Gran Gallego race time favorite turns first on a two and a half length lead trying to get after him second is El Discreto toward the inside and rapid lightning third through the final furlong El Gran Gallego leads it by two El Discreto is still second and still trying to gain ground but time ticking away El Gran Gallego with a length and a half cushion El Discreto just not getting to him El Gran Gallego is the winner El Discreto second, Zephyr Bay third in front of Rapid Lightning fourth. Number eight, El Gran Gallego holds on to win it for Alex Kazdan, trained by Alejandro Maimo and ridden a victory today by Jose A. Garcia. Comes back on five days rest and still wins it. Second race, one mile on the turf. Turf course listed as firm. Claim is three-year-olds and upward, which have never won three races or three-year-olds. Scratch both main track only. Number 10, Blackwater Charlie. And number 11, Cool Union Man. They're up. From the inside, the favorite all for us was away nicely. From the far outside, I feel great is showing speed. And Whitfield's return comes away in the top flight with I'm wide awake along the inside. Then it's Street Rage and Corinthian Summer. Isle for us has dropped back a bit. Now to race about three and a half lengths off the embattled pace setters in front of Yauza. Then down to the inside, it's Thunder and Willie with I'm a gangster on the outside. They run into the first turn. They're stacked five across the racetrack, and Whitfield's return has the lead with inside position and three quarter lengths of a, three quarters of a length in front. I'm wide awake as second. I feel great third. Moving fourth on the inside is Caribbean or Corinthian Summer, a half length in front of Street Rage. Stretch of two to all for us, who settles down about five lengths off the lead, a length better than Yauza, then Thunder and Willie, and I'm a gangster. They went 24 and 4 for the opening quarter time, and they move to the half mile pole. Whitfield's return leads it by a neck. I'm wide awake on the outside, second through a 49 and 4 half mile. Corinthian Summer moves up on the inside of I Feel Great. Now all for us is asked to move by Pedro Monterey. He's racing into fifth, getting in front of Street Rage. Age, and these top uh, pair of flight horses have opened five on Yauza, second last Thunder and Willie, and I'm a gangster as the trailer. They run around the far turn with Whitfield's return, continuing to lead it. On the outside here is I Feel Great, three wide, Corinthian Summer trying to find clear passage. I'm wide awake, just might have gave it to him. All for us is still fifth. He forced four lengths down with three sixteenths to go. On top, Whitfield's return continues to lead it. I Feel Great and I'm wide awake, run at the leader in Corinthian Summer between horses. All for us just doesn't have the top gear. Inside the Final 16th, Whitfield's return still in front. I'm wide awake and up the inside. It's Corinthian Summer. Whitfield's return the winner. I'm wide awake second. Corinthian Summer third in front of I Feel Great and All for Us. Number four, Whitfield's return scores. It pays a very nice $25.40 to win. Owned by Four Horsemen's Ranch in Sam Nick Stable. Trained by Steve DeMar. Ridden a victory today by Juan Labor. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back for the third race in a couple of moments. Shaman goes down the outside. Shaman goes chasing Danish Dynaformer. Danish Dynaformer. Shaman Ghost. And Shaman Ghost takes the Queen's Plate a length. And taking the 156th running of the Queen's Plate is Shaman Ghost. Beautifully bred by Ghost Zapper. Classic Bloodlines, Classic Sire, Ghost Zapper, 
standing at Adina Springs. Welcome back. Third race, five and a half furlongs. These are claimers, three-year-olds, and upward to seven runners in the field. The off-time favorite, number four, one for Don. And they're off. They've broken a perfect line. From the outside, Deer Dog is away the best and goes looking for the lead from Rasta Friend, who moves up to be second. From between horses, my brother Johnny A is now third. Time's Concern is fourth in front of DNA Approved. Then it's to the inside to Good News with a Twist, with the favorite one for Don on the outside. Allowed to settle here, he's moving into fifth, and he's about six lengths off the lead. They move into the far turn. They whistled a quarter, 22 seconds flat, and Deer Dog takes no prisoners under his pole. He's opened a four-length lead. Rasta Friend is second. My brother Johnny Johnny A is third, one for Don. Hard ridden for while fourth toward the inside. That's now moving fifth as time's concern. Followed by good news with a twist and out the back door. The trailer DNA approved. There's a quarter of a mile left to go. One for Don continues to chip away at this leader, and the leader is still Deer Dog by two. On the outside and Rasta Friend with one for Don up the inside and time's concern through the final furlong. One for Don just slowly grinding away on the outside, and he's up for the lead now. Good news with a twist is flying on toward the rail and time's concern. The favorite's a winner. One for Don, by two. Good news with the twist got second in front of Rasta Friend third, close for fourth in 105 and one. Number four, one for Don, rolls down the center of the track and scores, pays $3 to win. The favorite is owned by JN Racing Stables Incorporated, trained by George Navarro, and ridden to victory today by Edgard Zayas. Race four, five furlongs on the turf. These are claimers, fillies and mares, three-year-olds and upward, which have not won a race on the turf since May 19th or six months. Scratch the four, twinkling time. And they're off. May's treasure trove hops slightly at the beginning. From the inside, City Trip begins nicely, moving out the rail. That's something blue to challenge for the lead. From the outside, Mace Treasure Trove is away in the top flight. She's third with Run G a Run racing to her inside. It's a stretch of two docks, CDN, then it's a length back to our girl. She gone. Three better than Pentathlon, and the trailer is Good Song. Good Song has dropped far back in the early running. They move into the far turn. Run G a Run just had to tap on the brakes. That leaves City Trip alone on a three-length lead. Something blue in Mace Treasure Trove, second and third. Run G a Run, no place to go fourth. Toward the outside, Oxidian rallies in the yellow car, green colors, racing about five off the lead now. In front of our girl, she gone, top of the lane. City Trip continues to find plenty up top with a three and a half length lead. Oxidian is working off the fence, so is Run Gia Run, then it's May's Treasure Trove. But through the final furlong, City Trip has no dangers. City Trip is in front, Run Gia Run just checked again. Oxidian gets up for second, City Trip. Easily. Oxidian second, Mace Treasure Trove third, then Pentathlon, and Run G Run finished fifth in 57 and four. The four to five favorite number three, City Trip, proves much the best and pays $3.60 to win. Owned by Robert Carter, trained by Bobby Prasad, and ridden to victory today by Luis A. Castillo. Race five, six furlongs, claimers for two year olds. Eight runners in the field. And they're off. From the center, Lying Chief begins excellent. And will move to the early lead by almost a length early from Proud Enough, who's racing in second. From between horses, Woodburn comes on now. Toward the outside, it's title fight. Then it's Fancy Flash with Carapano in tight between horses. The two at the back are Strong Composition and Parmel Landing. They race to the half mile pole, Lying Chief by a neck. Proud Enough turns up the pressure second. Out in the center of the course, title fight ran up to take third in front of Woodburn fourth. Then it's Fancy Flash. Strong composition is hemmed in traffic. Carapano keeps him in and wide on the course is Parmel Landing. They went 22-3 and three for the opening quarter time. Lying Chief leads it to quarter of a length from under Edgar Zayas. Three widest title fight. Proud Enough works harder between horses. Then comes a rally from Strong Composition. Still looking to get to the outside to get into the clear as they run past the quarter pole. Lying Chief cuts the quarter and opens a three-length lead. Strong composition is into the clear now with three lengths to raise and an eighth of a mile to raise it. Down the outside in Parmel landing, but Lying Chief is strong up top. Lying Chief continues to dominate this race. He'll take him start to finish and win it as much as he wants, four or five in the end. Strong composition will be second in front of Woodburn third. Lying Chief, sharp in victory. 
in 112 and 3. Number four, Lying Chief stays undefeated. Really nice performance. That's two in a row for Lying Chief, owned by Theodore and Robin Miserak, trained by Alfred McIntosh, and that gives jockey Edgar Zayas two wins on today's card. We're going to take a short break. Do not touch that remote. We'll be right back. There's a new day dawning in Florida. Never before has a Breeders' Cup Classic winner retired to stud in the Sunshine State. Until now. Adina Springs presents three-time grade one winner and earner of over $4 million, Fort Larned. New to Adina Springs South. Welcome back. Sixth race, one mile on the turf. It's an allowance optional claimer for state bred fillies and mares, three year olds, and upward. Scratch number 12, Street Princess. And they're off. From the center, Sweet Mary begins the best and will try to get the early lead toward the inside. Any valid Saturday moves up. And from the top shelf, Creative License makes it three across the track in the run out of the chute and past the wire for the first time. Neville comes away racing in fourth while taken in hand in front of Like a Queen and Holy Day between horses. It's a stretch of two to set on Salsa, length and a half in front of Dukas. Then Starship Sassy and rein it in, and our Azure is last of all and spotted about eight and a half lengths off the lead as they run around the first turn. Toward the inside, it's any valid Saturday to lead it by a half a length. Sweet Mary between horses is second. Up on the outside, Creative License is now third, like a queen is fourth. From the outside, Neville runs in fifth. From between horses, it's Holy Day. Then it's Starship Sassy and Dukas, who are wide on the course. Tucking in is set on Salsa, two better than our Azure, and rein it in is the trailer. There's less than half a mile to go. They went the opening quarter in 23-3. and three. They went a half mile in 48-2, and two, and they leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Any valid Saturday leads at three parts of a length. On the outside, Creative License is now second. Neville trying to get into third around Sweet Mary. Like a Queen saves ground toward the inside, fifth only two and a half off the lead. Followed by Holy Day, then Starship Sassy and Dukas. Our Azure picks a path between horses, set on Salsa is next, and the trailer is reined in and it's wide open off the top of the turn. On the inside, Eddie a valid Saturday. Sweet Mary continues to box on from between horses. Neville down the outside. Widest of all, our Azure is rolling. Here's our Azure and Eduardo Nunez trying to get over the top and catch Sweet Mary. Our Azure from far back to win it and win it going away. Holy Day emerged for second, close third. Sweet Mary or Neville then like a queen in 138 and four. Number eight, our Azure comes flying late and springs the upset pays $63.60 to win. Owned by R.G. Lundock, trained by Ralph Cantonese and ridden to victory today by Eduardo Nunez. The seventh race, seven furlongs for a maiden Philly two-year-olds, eight runners going to the post. And they're off. From the outside, Bajema begins nicely. Here's the first timer, first distinction moving up from down toward the inside. First distinction moves up to take the lead. Herkimer Diamond now moves up to be second from between horses. That's Artisima who's now moving up. Artisima joins the vanguard with Clover Knight. These four are quickest and racing behind the speed from fifth is Herkimer Diamond. It's a stretch of another two and a half lengths back to Dragon Queen. And the two at the back are Lentini and Perfect Patty. Down the back stretch they go, and with the lead, it's first distinction to the half mile pole in front by a half a length. Clover Knight is second, Artisima of three wide, third, four wide is Bajema. It's a stretch of five to Herkimer Diamond, who's two better than Dragon Queen. Stretch of another three to Lentini, and the trailer is Perfect Patty. They leave the back stretch and move on to the far turn. The opening quarter was robust, 22 and one. They won a 45 and one half mile, and there's five sixteenths to go. First distinction leads it now by two and a half lengths. Clover Knight is second. Here's Herkimer Diamond moving sharply on the inside and also running on well from the back is Dragon Queen. They're at the top of the stretch. First distinction trying to seal the deal. Opens a four length lead now. Herkimer Diamond has not sustained her bid. Clover Knight is still second. Also not sustaining a run was Dragon Queen but first distinction is moving away. First distinction. Very impressive in her career unveiling. She's wrapped up by Gallardo and six or seven in front. It's going to be Herkimer Diamond second from Clover Knight third, Lentini from far back to be fourth in front of Dragon Queen. 
125 and 3 was the running time. Wow, what a performance by first time starter number two. First distinction wins by about 10 lengths. Boy, was that impressive. Owned by acclaimed racing stable, that gives trainer Alfred McIntosh his second training victory on the card. Written by Antonio Gallardo, the first time starter pays $8.20 to win. The eighth race, seven and a half furlongs on the turf. These are for three-year-olds and up who have never won three races. The claiming price, $30,000 down to $25,000. Jockeying on the one, Tyler Gaffleon scratched the 10, scratched the 11. They're off. From the outside, Ginger Goose begins nicely. Tiger Bourbon is showing speed. Away in the top flight is Creaky Cricket. And also moving up, Fear the Falcon. It will be Fear the Falcon quickest in the run to the first turn. From the outside and taken second is Ginger Goose. In between horses is less than perfect. Three wide out there goes Creaky Cricket. Then Tiger Bourbon and Blame It on Tequila. Love Rules All is next, followed by Bridal's Holiday. An Island Dude sets up shop at the back of the pack. They're chasing the speed of Fear the Falcon and Jose Caraballo through the opening quarter in 24 seconds flat. Creaky Cricket moves up on the outside to be second in front of Ginger Goose third. Stretch of three to Tiger Bourbon, who's on hold while fourth in front of Love Rules All. Then from between horses, it's less than perfect. Blame it on Tequila at the rail. Island Dude is three wide while second last. And trailing the field is Bridal's Holiday, about nine lengths off the lead. They move into the far turn with less than half a mile to go. They went 47-3 and three for the opening half-mile speed. Fear the Falcon by a length and a half. Creaky Cricket is asked to quicken by Gallardo racing in second now. Ginger Goose is third. Trying to move up is Tiger Bourbon and from the outside trying to put in a charge is Love Rules All. Then from the back and Bridal's Holiday with Blame It on Tequila. Island Dude has not been heard from. Three quarters, 112 and 1. They're at the top of the stretch. In fact, they're at the final furlong and Fear the Falcon is yet to be reeled in. Ginger Goose trying to get after him in the late stages. Fear the Falcon almost there. Ginger Goose is lunging late. Back third is Tiger Bourbon to the wire. Fear the Falcon all the way. Ginger Goose second. Tiger Bourbon third in front of Creaky Cricket. Then blame it on Tequila in 131 and 2. Number six, Fear the Falcon flies past the finish line and scores, pays $15.20 to win, owned by Julian DeMora and trained by Marcial Navarro, ridden to victory today by Jose Carabillo. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back for the late Daily Double. Welcome back for our first half of the late Daily Double. The ninth race is a six furlong sprint, an allowance optional claimer for Phillies and Mares, three year olds and upward scratch number seven, Fiesta Rose. And they're up. From the outside, Tar and Feather wins the break. From between horses, Uli moves up to be second. Mom's Laugh is away racing third with Pursuing Fate down to the inside. They're followed by Lucky Switch, then Paris Bikini. It's a length back to Metamu. To her outside goes Bohem Delave. It's a length back to the two trailers, Street Smoke and Jamie's Dancer. Down the back stretch they go, and Tar and Feather leads at three parts of a length. Mom's Laugh is there second. Uli now third, Pursuing Fate and Paris Bikini are next. Then it's Metamu who moves up to the inside of Lucky Switch. It's a length and a half to Street Smoke down to the inside and trying to improve is Bohem Delave. It's a stretch of another five to Jamie's Dancer and the trailer is Dr. Adali. They went 22 and 2 for the opening quarter speed. Up on the outside, Mom's Laugh just ran up to take the lead from Tar and Feather. Uli is off the fence and re rallying Meta Mew. And the black color is also working into the clear with Paris Bikini and Lucky Switch, widest of all, running on from the back and Bohem Delave through the final furlong. Many chances here. Uli up for the lead down the outside. Lucky Switch. And and from between horses, Paris Bikini. Mons Laugh battles on and Metamu ducks to the inside. In deep stretch, here's Lucky Switch on the outside. On the inside and coming back again, Paris Bikini photo finish. Lucky Switch with momentum on the outside of Paris Bikini. Then Mons Laugh and 111 and 3. Number three, Lucky Switch wins it. A perfectly timed ride by Tyler Gaffleone, owned by Goldmark Farm LLC, trained by Ralph Nix.
The tenth and final race, five furlongs on the turf. These are maiden claimer fillies, two-year-olds. Full field of ten runners going to the post. And runners away. From the center, Layla's way gets the first call. Danae Storman moves up on the outside with speed. Jill's catch away in the top flight. So is Aroma Blue and emerging between horses. My Aunt Lily now takes third. Moving up on the outside is Monkey Mo. It's a stretch of two to first-timer Shakespeare's Girl. Three and a half lengths clear of I'm a Tornado, and the trailer is Causeway Jack. They move into the far turn. Danae Storman trying to cross over and make the lead by a length and a quarter. Layla's way is second. My Aunt Lily is third. Stretch of two. Jill's catch now fourth. Then it's Aroma Blue and Monkey Mo. Danny Darlin's down to the inside. Six lengths off the pace, followed by Shakespeare's Girl. Three in front of I'm a Tornado, and the trailer is Causeway Jack. They run to the top of the stretch. They went 22-1 and one for the opening quarter speed yeah, wow. and Layla's way just ran up to take the lead. Jill's catch is working home for McIntosh into second and from the inside Danny Darlin's now coming on third. Through the final furlong Layla's way strong up top leads it by two. Jill's catch is second. Danny Darlin's is third. Late run from I'm a Tornado. Layla's way is hanging on. Up second, Jill's catch give I'm a Tornado third over Danny Darlin's. It's close for the high five between Shakespeare's Girl and Aroma Blue in 59 and 3. Number four, Layla's Way scores in the nightcap, owned by Carlos Aloya, trained by Dan Peter, ridden to victory today by apprentice Vincente Guidel. In the pick five, nobody had five, four or five. $390.20. We got a carryover going into Friday, $15,218.48. In the Rainbow Six, only five of six, $1,674.98 to carry over $32,240.06. In the Super High Five, five of five, pay $2,769.10. And that wraps up Thursday's action on Friday. Starts a really fun weekend here at Gulfstream Park West. We have 10 races on Friday. On Saturday, double stakes action. A couple of grade three events, the Mike Charmer and the Tropical Turf. It's going to be a fun weekend. Good night and good luck. <laughs>